Hey everybody, welcome to Live Coding with Jesse. I'm Jesse, and today we're gonna have a short stream because I forgot that I told someone I would meet them and check out their computer and figure out why one of the websites I built wasn't working on their computer at noon. Uh, so it's 11 a.m. here right now. So that means the stream has to be a little less than an hour. Their office is just right around the corner from mine, so uh, it shouldn't be. If I can finish like three minutes before noon, that'll be give me enough time. So apologies for that. I know we usually go longer than an hour. I just I literally I remember five minutes ago, so um, it just totally slipped my mind, and I never put it in my calendar. So anyway, we're just gonna get started right away. I. Let's see. Okay, yeah, I know there's probably not the normal amount of viewers in here yet. I like to wait a minute, but since we have a tight schedule, I'm just going to go on. Uh, probably just going to do one Pomodoro session and then questions. If there's not really that many questions, then maybe we'll do a little bit more, but definitely we'll get two full sessions in. So let me start up the clock. Today, we are going to upgrade. Where's my package, Jason? So today we're going to upgrade to the stable version of Apollo GraphQL 2.1. So let's go to where we have that right now. So it's the package name is React Apollo. So right now we're at 2.1.0 beta 0. And we had, thanks to Harshit, we had some workarounds happening that enabled this to work. But at first, when we tried to use this, there were some issues. So now that this is no longer you know, beta, we should be fine to use it. So I'm, I think I should be able to just do this, change that, and then run yarn. If I can't just do this, somebody let me know. So I mean, what we're going to do, we're not just going to install this and say, hey, we're done today. We're going to install it, and then we're going to go in and update everything that's still using the, the old way, like using a higher order component. We're going to update that and try to use the new way whenever we can, which if you're not familiar with the new way, we had used it on some components before, uh, but now we'll, we'll use it. And I'm, I'm going to link to you a blog post that explains more about what is new and why we might want to use this. So I'm going to link that right now. Uh, it's in uh, the live chat. If the link in the live chat does not work, try copying and pasting it. Sometimes if you if you click right on it, it's it doesn't work. All right, so let's try this and then Whoa, yarn. Check the polo, incorrect period dependency. All right, we got some warnings about peer dependencies, but I think, I don't think that's a big deal. Apollo client, 2.3. Okay, let's see, you know what, let me double check the Apollo, I thought I had it up on my screen, the GitHub repo. Uh, I guess I must have closed that tab. So I'm gonna check this really quickly just to see what the, what the versions are. Um, I guess we could try to do update Apollo. Maybe we could update the other stuff. I, I mean, it looks it looks okay. I think it looks all right. Let if anybody 
notices anything weird with this uh, or notices that I'm doing something wrong, let me know. But, I mean, we've already had, if we were installing it fresh, we would want to install some other stuff too. But we already have all that other stuff. So, I think we'll be fine. I mean, if we really wanted to, we could try to update all the other things. Yeah, let's try to do that. Um, what is that yarn command? Oh no, I didn't have the right camera on. <laughs> sorry about that. So sorry, I can't believe I did that. Uh, I was just in such a hurry. Um, okay, so basically we have React Apollo. <laughs> All I did was type in yarn after changing uh, the version number. So that's all I did. But I, I think I just want to upgrade the other uh, packages that have to do with this. So like in particular, these Apollo packages, GraphQL, you know, these ones. So I just can't remember, is it yarn upgrade or yarn update if I want to update packages? No need of upgrade. Harshit says it's good. No need to upgrade those other packages. Okay, Harshit says they're separate. I know they're separate, but I'm just wondering, since the last time we added those, are there updates, and should we just go ahead and update them right now? Okay, uh, Aditya says yarn upgrade interactive latest. Okay, and that'll let us go through, right, and see say what we want to upgrade right now. All right, let's do that then. All right, so let's see what we have. I, this is cool. I never did it this way. This is really cool. Choose which packages. Cool. Mm. I guess we'll update. Oh, we should upgrade these Material UI icons since we now are at the latest version of Material UI. I suppose like we would want the version to match. So, all right, a lot of these look like minor stuff, obviously because they're they're green. Um, oh, more choices here. Yes, yeah. I don't want to mess with any with some of these that are red right now until we read up on them. Yeah, so what's we've up to any more choices? Now that I have these selected, I'm good to go with enter. Is that it? Okay, back to just not leave. Okay, double check in the live chat here. Because I know if I'm about to do something really crazy, you all let me know. So, uh, there we go. So, let's try this. I really ought to have a schedule to just update packages so I don't end up having packages really out of date. Or maybe I should just set a day. Like, every week, we're just going to update packages. Does that sound like a good plan? What do, what do people normally do? Is there, for, for those of you who are developers, um, you know, working, or you have worked with other developers before, do you, um, is there usually some schedule or what, what's some way to keep these things up to date? What's a normal thing, normal way to do it? This is one of the downfalls of me, you know, working by myself most of the time. When it comes to things like this, 
I don't really know what the standard is. Uh, Harshit says, you need Greenkeeper bot. Package maintainers use Greenkeeper bot or some sort of... Not in GitHub. Some sort of bot in GitHub. Okay. All right, cool. We'll have to look into that. I mean, realistically, we have a lot of stuff going on, and I know we have outdated packages running on things, and it's the more we make, the harder it's going to be to manually keep up with that. All right, so let me, you know what, on my other screen, I'm going to type in uh, Greenkeeper bot, and that way I'll remember it after the, the stream, because I know I'm, I'm going to have to go right to a meeting after this, so... I'm likely to forget unless I already have it on my screen. Okay, so there it's it's on my other screen. And oh cool. Harshit says uh, the bot makes a pull request every time a package changes. That's that's amazing. That's really cool. I alright. If you learn nothing else from today's stream, remember Greenkeeper bot will automatically make a pull request every time a package updates in one of your projects. That's amazing. Um, that's really cool. All right, well, it looks like we have everything updated. First thing I'd like to do is just make sure that things are still working, and then we can actually go in. If we need to correct a problem, we will correct it. If there are no problems, we'll go in and upgrade to some of the newer stuff that we can do now. And hopefully that'll help uh, help the project uh, to be more like uniform right now we're using two different ways uh, or I should say we're using the new way in some places and then the other place it's just broken because I I'm pretty sure it doesn't work all right uh, so we're not using it here on this page so that wouldn't really be useful to go to Let's go to a page where we are using this. So about, all right, nice. Let's check out. These error messages all have to do with material UI. And I think, uh, so basically, we haven't changed yet. So I believe uh, Niki opened an issue for this, but when we upgraded to the latest version of Material UI beta, uh, we're, we're now getting a warning because of this underline, I think, on the inputs. So I haven't fixed that yet. So that's why we have all that red there. And I can run ngrok as well and let you all check it out uh, for yourselves. There we are. Okay, so that looks good. Also, I have all the links now on the About section. They all should work. Some of them are external links, but uh, all these links should now work. And I have started in on academics. So I'm going through. It's taking a while because I'm going through, and some of these places have like sub-menus. You can't see them here. They're on the, the live site right now. So I need a way to bring in some of those submenus. Uh, I'm still thinking about how to do that. But anyway, so it's not just these pages. Like For instance, I'd go into this consumer information page, and then, oh, there are links here. And then I'd go through and make sure each one of these links also works. So it's taken me quite a while. So that's what, if you're wondering why nothing's changing on this project lately, that's why, because uh, all the time that I'm not streaming, I'm spending doing that with links or going through a huge Excel spreadsheet that has every piece of data that we've gotten out of the database. And I'm color coding ones that like, I need to input or I need to ask my boss about as to whether or not we're input. And I'm trying to get rid of things that we're definitely not bringing over or we already have brought over. Because I want to make sure I don't miss anything so it's a little tedious, but I, it's really the only way I can be sure that I haven't missed anything. You know, because at the end of it, I should have nothing left in that spreadsheet. Everything should be deleted. And if I have anything left, I know I'm not done. All right. 
so this looks good uh, this works so I'm really trying to think if there would be I guess we could try out a profile a faculty profile just to be sure I don't think we're doing anything differently yeah that works okay now let's go in and see what we're doing that's so different uh, let me let me commit this first. I'm going to do git add. Uh, if you're not familiar with git, this is you do you'll be doing this routine over and over and over again when you start using git. Uh, Anna just said, "Hey, hey, Anna, how's it going?" Um, so you do a git add to stage your files that you want to commit. Now the files are staged, and then you do, in our project, we do yarn cm, but normally you would do this. You would do git commit, and then do an m, and then put your commit message, and then type enter. We're going to do yarn cm. All that does is it's exactly the same thing. It just asks you a few questions to help you make a better commit message. So... All right, what, what were we using when we update stuff? I can't remember what it was. Was it, was it chore? Or build? It was build? Okay. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it says right there, dependencies. Okay. No broccoli. All right, so we're gonna go to build. I'm just double checking these. I never read these ones down here. Revert. Cool. All right. Um, short. So now we're gonna write a short description. And this is what you would normally put in the parentheses after the M flag if you were just committing using the normal git commit. Uh, command and we're just going to say update Apollo packages the latest versions okay yeah so I mean we update a lot of packages if anybody really wants to know they can look at the the, the log of what's changed uh, in the package JSON file but um, in general, it was Apollo related stuff that we uh, we did update. There are no breaking changes, at least none that I've seen. Oops, I don't have to do that. Just enter. And it does affect an open issue. So let me reference this issue. Uh, which one is this? I was just reading through it. Issue 68. Um, let's see. It should pass. We're definitely going to keep getting a warning until we fix all the stuff we need to fix uh, from the material upgrade. Awesome. We're going to push this up to GitHub with a git push command. And there you are. So there you are. So you can check out that package JSON file on your own now just to see what versions we're running now and, and what all we um, we just updated. And see so Harsha just mentioned and the um, the issue that I just referenced was an issue that Harsha had made whenever we first had to kind of do the workaround to get the beta version to work uh, and the issue basically just says hey take that workaround out once we um, once we do that see now I can show us how to amend a file to a commit <laughs> I 
Okay, so Harsha, let's um, if you can, if 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 you have time to help, uh, please let me know if I'm doing anything wrong. But I'm gonna try to attempt to remove uh, that extra stuff that we no longer need. And I'm gonna keep an eye on the time. Let me see how much time I have. Six minutes. Okay. Um, you know what? Let's. I only have six minutes left, so I'm not going to remove that right now because I think it might be, it'll be more useful to everyone watching for me to just go through some of the new stuff because um, not every, I think it's it's probably going to be a rare occurrence that somebody use the same workaround that we did, so, but they will be using some of the newer stuff here, so let's uh, let's do that for now and then later on I can remove the other stuff. So let's just look at some of the files. So we're gonna go in our pages folder. Here we are, pages. So I believe page.js has the new way to do things. I'm trying to make some space here. So page.js, yeah, here's the new way. So we're using this query We're using this query component, All right, and that's where we're we're getting our variables and making the the query. So yeah, so in our get initial props, we're passing in from the route right the ID and the type, which is what we need to send to WordPress uh, to the GraphQL plugin in WordPress to get the right data. We're getting this from our server it pulls it from the URL, from the route. Once it, it goes in here and to get initial props, and this is a Next.js thing, you can't use this uh, regularly with React, then it, it saves these to props. So that way we have access to this down here for a query component. So we can pass in the type and the ID. And then what we get back is we do we do some stuff to the data uh, here, but unrelated to the plugin we're working on right now or, or GraphQL, uh, and then we just post the content. This is meant to be a generic component to where we can route a lot of stuff into here and it'll display the minimum data. But what we have been doing for certain pieces, certain types of content, we want to have a more specialized template. Right, so each one of these pages, you can consider it like um, the uh, the template file for that that site. <laughs> What's our should saying? Global X is still there. I've said to remove it third time out. <laughs> Sorry, Harshit. I guess I just always forget to remove it. I'll remove it right now. There we are. The Glow Wex was just there for testing, so we don't really need that there. I had totally forgotten that you said that. Now that you bring it up, I remember when I asked you uh, about it. But um, All right, so let's go to one page that I believe we did have. Was it the faculty page? Okay, I already switched the faculty page over to the query. Is it news? There is one page that's still using the old the old way okay good here's the one that's using the old way so let's I have the the font size pretty big but I'm hoping we can do it kind of a side by side and see so this is what we we used to do so we we pass the data like this okay so we're still passing right the the ID uh, and we didn't we weren't dealing with the type because we were sending it directly to the news query and everything in the news query was was all the type called news um, so let's let's just switch this over this I guess will be a good example of just how can you switch over a component quickly so right off the bat we need uh, some different things right we don't need page query anymore I'm sorry, we don't need news query anymore. 
I think we can do this with a regular page query. Okay, the, the difference in queries, um, I don't think we need to look at it, but basically this query allows us to pass a type along with um, the ID. So uh, we're just going to use this query, and it'll really cut down on the amount of queries that we need. And I'm going to say page. I mean, I suppose I could just copy and paste this. So instead of GraphQL, we're importing query and compose. And let's see, we still need with tail, we still need root page query component. All right, cool. That's what we need. Now let's scroll down. Let's scroll down to the bottom and get rid of this stuff first. So now instead of all of this, actually, let's just be easier again to just copy and paste. So basically, all this GraphQL stuff can go away. And I'm just going to change this to news. Okay, since this component is news. So now, it's a bit more clean already. And we just need to add in this query component. So I think it would be best to just copy and paste this query component. And we've already run through what this does. And let's see, we're doing anything different? Data and HTML. Yes. No, we're not, huh? Just double checking. Oh, okay, I see what we have. We do have a, um, a title. So let's put this down here for now and then add in this extra this extra piece. So the difference with our news component is that we're adding in a title. So let's pull this down and make sure that we also add in our title. And we're going to need to wrap this in a div. So this should be fine to wrap everything in a div. I hope And we'll save that. Okay. So, title. Let's see where. I'm trying to find where. There we are. There's that last piece of data that we need to get rid of that was in there from before. And we need to make sure that we are getting back the title. equals data and let's bring this back content and I believe we are bringing title in already we'll find out in a second and we can go check the query oops hold on a second content why is this not working is it because we're not using all right, because it's not used yet. All right, so down here, instead of data, news, edges, right, uh, we're going to use title. Okay, and the reason we can just do title, right, is because... Well, let me see if it works first, and then I'll explain it. I don't want to explain it to you if I messed it up. All right. I think that's all we need to get this to work. Um, let's see. Whoops. I got some. Oh, expect it to be on the same line. That's That's fine.
Where did that come from? Data. Whoops, that's my fault. I um I shouldn't have put that there. They were on different lines, so I didn't realize what all was going into this. Uh, is it's not just data. Um, let's see if I can show you here. So it's the the data is this data this props type dot edges. So it's within data we're looking up this props type edges node content. So what we need to do instead is add another. That's going to be, and let's put it here. So we're going to say, instead of content, title. OK. I think it's called title, so I think that'll work. We'll find out in a second. There we go. And uh, I did see a question about that node edges 0. That's the, uh, the, the, the structure of the data that we get back from the WP GraphQL plugin that allows us to use GraphQL with WordPress. So that's the structure. Uh, so that's that's why we're working with it in that way, and that's kind of a lot to do. So that's it's it makes sense to just use data and title down here instead of having to do you know everything. So let's go to news.js, which hasn't been working since we switched over, and let's see if it works. Um, we don't have any links to it. So I'm hoping there's something saved in my browser. There we are. No. And this could probably property loading of undefined. Oh, uh, let's see. Did we have something? I guess it wasn't that if loading. Okay, we can remove the loading. So we have two loading um, areas here that we don't need. Okay. And do we even need that data? No, we don't, right? We don't need that either. Okay, so forgot to take that out. Okay. I should have kept track of how many lines we were using in that component. Didn't remember that. I didn't need to be. A... All right, let's try it out. No. 1621. That was odd. Let me refresh. Okay, there we are. Can I feel it under pipe on right root query if meant to render collection of children using right set? H3, shows 32. Uh, it's possible we might have to make a change in the server because we were probably just sending. Oh, you know what? We never changed our get initial props function. There we are. Now, what we can do uh, actually, do we need that? This props type. We don't need this props type, right? Because we know it's going to be news. News is not defined because <laughs> I forgot to make it a string. I think. 
think news was. Let me check the time. Okay, I'm good on the time. I'm going to look at the live chat really quickly. Okay, you are talking about the um, swipeable drawers in Material UI. Yeah, I'm really excited about that. All right, let's see what I'm doing wrong here. Initial props. Query ID, return ID. And I probably should check that I actually have a news item <laughs> like this with this slug. So I do have the WordPress uh, installation open on my other screen. So I'm just going to double check on the slug here. So. I don't know if the slug is right or not. I just copy and paste it just to be sure. Okay, still can't read property edges of undefined. Query. All right, what am I doing? All right, so let's see. Page query. So we are importing page query. Uh, let me double check the news query that we had just to make sure what we were supposed to pass is, is correct. Query news. Yeah, news, new device, news, name equals name. Okay, we are pulling in the title, so that, that part should work. Um, News should work. Let's double check our, while we're here, I guess we should check out our page query. So type, if we pass in type, it should work here. It should say news. All right, everything looks fine uh, for that. And next, let's go back to our Uh, I guess we'll double check the server and see what we're doing with news. Let's see if we have news in here. So we did make some major changes to the server since the last time news worked. I see some, so a bunch of stuff in the live chat. I'm going to end this in just a minute or two. I just want to try one or two more things. Page news. Um, let's go with. What else do we need? We shouldn't really. Yeah, we should be all right. Okay, so faculty page type faculty. I mean, we could add in the type here if we wanted to. It's not going to make a difference, though, because we're already manually putting the type in which we may want to end up doing at some point anyway and then maybe we could make that news component a little more reusable for things other than news okay Oops. hey a different error I like that. I don't think I've seen that one before. <laughs> oh, and what's this? 
this error. Where's my terminal? <laughs> when all else fails, just restart your dev server. Same error. I break. <laughs> All right, let me go back. I want to make sure I didn't break everything. Uh, let's try this again. Okay, so that's working. So we are taking it to news. What if, let's just take this to page for a second and see if we can get it to render like that. Really? Still? So, news is being routed to page with the type of news. What is going on? All right, let's see what time it is. All right. <laughs> I, I've got to be missing something simple. I mean, at this point, I, I totally bypassed the news component. So are we getting back? Let's check our page query. News. I don't know what the problem is. <laughs> oh, cool. Uh, Nikki says, I can just type RST to restart the server. No need to control C and then you're in dev again. All right, cool. That is a good tip. Oh, it's just RS. Even better. Okay, Harshit thinks the workaround is causing the problem, so remove Babel plugin module alias from package JSON and Babel RC. All right, this will be the last thing we try, and then I'm going to stop so I can get in some questions. All right, so where's our pack? Babel RC. Um. 
plug in module alias. Can I remove all the plug-in stuff, or do we need any any of this other stuff? Because it's just, just one. And upgrade next to higher version. And then Canary, too. Oh, OK, so we'll actually need, we need to upgrade a lot of stuff. Okay, um, I'm just going to remove all the plugin stuff. All right, that's gone. Where's the package? It's on. There we go. And where's my plugin stuff? Modules. Uh, uh, uh. All right, harsh. It was move back. <laughs> Sorry, harsh. The bot got you because you were typing a lot of messages. Uh, okay. All right, Next.js. Up. Oh, okay. He did all caps. That's what what messed him up. Next.js version is important. Okay. Babel plugin module resolver. Is that what we don't need anymore? I'm just going to update next, next 5.0.1. Where's next? Next, 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 next. Remove the canary too. Oh, okay. So we don't need that. And then we won't need this module resolver plugin. All right, let's save that and let's do yarn. Oh. Looks like I need a version for 5.0.1. Interesting. Should I go down to 5.0 then? Or should I just move up to the latest version? And then Canary 2. OK, you're saying upgrade next to higher version than Canary 2. OK, so we'll do the latest one. All right. OK, so we've done that. Let me try this restart, because probably need to do that. Nice. Thanks for that one, Nikki. So much faster. I'll just have to remember to do that because now it's like in my muscle memory to just restart it, like manually shut it down and then start it back up. All right, cool. Whoa, it worked. And it's not pretty. All right, well, at least it worked excellent. Uh, we did route it through the page component, so let's let's go back and switch it back, just to be sure uh, that it works with the news component. Although catechism, that might be we might not need the titles. We might have been getting dual titles anyway. All right, uh, server, and let's route it back to news. Mm. 
All right, so I must have done something wrong then with that new one if it's still not working. Page news. Uh, let's go ahead and just move this. Let's just take this entire um, get initial props function and move that over here. And then let's change this back from news to this props type. And then that way we could reuse this. We may even end up renaming it at some point if it helps. All right, so we're not getting an error. We're just not getting any data now. Interesting. I'm not getting any data. <sighs> really weird. All right, one more restart, and I'm going to start answering questions while I wait for that. Uh, if worst comes to worst, I can just run this through the page component to get it to work, and later on figure out, hey, why doesn't it work? But hopefully this was, you learned something. I mean, there were some cool tips that came up, most of them not from me. So hopefully you learned something. I'm gonna try to go through the comments now. I definitely did more, I, I worked on this more than I wanted to. So I apologize in advance for if my answers are, are kind of short, you know, shorter than normal. Uh, let's see. Uh, Aditya says, how long have you been coding? Like five years? It seems like I always say five years and I never change it. I guess it's going to be almost six years then since I've been streaming for almost a year. So <laughs> somewhere around there, like five or six years. Uh, Umar says, what spec is your MacBook? Very random question, off topic. Right now I'm on an iMac, but my, my MacBook Pro is, I think it's like the late 2015 MacBook Pro. I, I don't remember offhand what it, what it has though. The iMac I'm running here, I think is late 2014. And uh, it's like 32 gigs of RAM. Uh, I can't remember the processor, sorry about that. If I had more time, I'd look it up for you right now. Niki says, how are you liking uh, Fira code with ligatures? It's kind of cool. I'm still not like exactly used to it. I still see it and I'm like, that looks weird. But um, I, I think it'll be good once I get used to it. And asked what the weather's like today in my city. It's actually not bad. It was about 30 degrees Fahrenheit uh, this morning. Uh, I guess in Celsius, that's around zero, right? Uh, where's my uh, my free code camp uh, Fahrenheit to Celsius converter? I don't even remember where I have that. Maybe it's on CodePen. Uh, anyway, um, and it's gonna be about 50 degrees Fahrenheit later on today. So it should be you know, pretty nice. I think it's supposed to be sunny. So I'm sure the kids will be outside playing uh, as soon as they get home from school. Steven says, Jesse, first time being online watching since I started a new job. Oh, awesome. I'm glad you could watch. Let, let me know uh, how the new job's going. I was wondering about that. Um, 
to know I hadn't seen you in a while. I know you started, so uh, yeah, yeah. Let me know. I'm really interested. John says the tension when you do your short streams. The dev like, yeah. It, <laughs> there's so much pressure when I try to do a short stream. I, like feel it, and things like. <laughs> Why can't things just work when I do a short stream? They never work. If you, Believe it or not, when I first started streaming like on my own channel, my goal was to do a stream in a half hour or less. I don't know how I did it. Well, I mean, nobody watched back then, so it was much easier to... You know, there'd be like one person watching, so I could keep up with the live chat a lot easier. <laughs> Let's see... Oh, Mike. Michael, how's it going? Yeah, it's almost over. Uh, Harshit, I can I can definitely see your message. <laughs> Michael say, calling John Mister John, like <laughs> like my daughter did on Friday. Angie says, hola. Hola, Angie. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Anna says, what's the first programming language I learned? Uh, JavaScript. I did, like, I messed around with a couple of different programming languages, but the first one that I feel like I've really learned well enough to, to actually build things in, other than, like, your really basic Hello World stuff, is JavaScript. I have done a little bit with Python, Java, C++ and C. Oh, and PHP. Why do I always forget PHP? Of course I've, you all have seen me do PHP stuff. Well, Phoenix asked uh, if this is over. Yeah, it's almost over, sorry about that. It's shorter than normal. Uh, Steven says, job's going great, very heavy on WordPress, some programming on the back end. I'm the only developer on a team with a couple of freelancers helping. So far, it's going great. Awesome. I'm, I'm so glad to hear that. Uh, so just got back from San Francisco working with a company website that's pretty massive. Oh, that's so cool. That's really cool. Uh, let's see. Michael says, going back through all the old videos for this project to figure out what exactly you're trying to do. <laughs> Maybe I ought to go back through the videos and try to figure out what we're doing sometimes. <laughs> um, and this says, wow, it's great. You know so much languages. I mean, I, I don't... I don't know those other languages. I've just done a little bit of basic stuff with them. So, like, I'm... I'm somewhat familiar, so I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to make it seem like I know more than I, I really do. Um, Nisar says I was a regular watcher of live session for Project Three, uh, and then after I discontinued, is I still can connect to this, and from this onwards, or should I watch all videos tutorial? Um, Nisar, I would say like you're probably fine to just connect with this and keep watching. Uh, ask as many questions as you need to. I just think at this point, it would probably be really hard to watch all the videos. I mean, this is video 50 in for Project 5, so there's quite a bit of content. Uh, so, I mean, certainly you can watch it if you want, but I don't think it's necessary. And definitely, uh, if you're going to try to watch my old videos, put it on like two times speed or something, because uh, it's just so much content. Uh, Phoenix says, actually have a degree in IT, but starting free code camp to get at it again. I heard a lot of good things. Do you have any pointers? Um, I would just say, um, my biggest pointer is when you're starting out again, like just try to do a little bit every day. 
So it's much better to do, let's say, a half hour every day with Free Code Camp or whatever you're using to learn than to like wait till one day a week, like on the weekend, and try to put in eight hours. You'll remember it a lot better. So, I mean, other than that, like, I could probably say a little bit more, but I have officially no time. It is 12 o'clock uh, noon here, so I'm going to have to end the stream. Last question, how old are you? I am 32 years old. Um, Junaid says, you're doing great, man. Thank you. You're welcome. And let's see. I thought I, I missed some stuff. I did miss some stuff. Okay, I remember this comment because I glanced up and saw it, and it was crazy uh, in a good way. A noble and savage says, Jesse makes major changes in my heart. In a manly way, of course. <laughs> and with that comment, I will end. Thank you so much, everyone. Sorry that it was a short stream and that I would never really figured out exactly what the problem was. Uh, sometimes that happens. And uh, oh, and I just saw your question. I have to go to another meeting though. So just ask me that question um, either in the next stream or like direct message it to me on some social media thing, and I'll be happy to answer that. Um, all right. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Thank you. <laughs>